two years ago, some of us weren't here. We thank you, God. A month ago, some of us were not here, God. We thank you, God. 35 years ago, some of us were not here. We thank you, God. But you have adopted us in your family, God. You have called us child, son, daughter. You have accepted us, God, and did not reject us, Lord. And we thank you for that, God. That we can now worship you in spirit and in truth, God. We can now clap our hands to you, God. We can raise our voices to you, God. We can make a joyful noise to you, God. And the enemy cannot stop us, God. And demons cannot stop what's happening here, God. And our mere flesh cannot stop what's happening here, God. Because we worship you in spirit and in truth, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for the freedom in this room, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the passionate ones, God. For the fire that's burning in this room, Lord God. Give me with such Chicago ablaze with the power of your spirit, Lord Jesus. Use us, God. Use us all, Lord Jesus. For your glory, Lord God. We worship you, Lord Jesus. And we honor you, God, as King of kings and Lord of lords, God. And we surrender to you tonight, God. Have your way, Lord God, and speak to us and through us, God. As we, Lord God, see the day drawing near, as your word says, God. You are worthy of all the glory and all the honor, Lord Jesus. And we exalt you in this house, Lord. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus Christ one more time. I thank God that there's a peace that surpasses all understanding, right? There's a peace in knowing that we're his, that we are his children, that he got us. I thank God for his spirit that's in this room, for the freedom that's in this place that we've been redeemed. I want to invite Julio up here to encourage us to give unto God and the same heart of worship. How's everybody doing? <laughs> I know it's snowing outside, but I'm glad everybody's here. And all it's amen, you know. All of you, I'm so happy to see all of you. How many remember last week when I was talking about our walk with God, the offering message that I was walking, uh, that I was talking about, about our walk with God, how he desires us to live uh, a life of humbleness and how he desires to live a life of faithfulness and loving others and encouraging others? Well, humbleness is something that I left out last week, but I'm glad I'm able to talk about it today. You see, God desires us to have a humble heart. He desires us to live a humble life. You see, even Jesus and himself came here to earth and he walked a humble life even being completely obedient to death on the cross even during his last days he was washing the feet of his disciples on his knees washing the feet of disciples so what is God trying to tell us he wants us to walk that exact life he wants us to walk that exact life he doesn't want us to walk a, a, a life of being prideful you, got, you understand me? He doesn't want us to walk a, a life of pride. For how many of y'all ever, like, you're, you're slouching, you're slouching for, for like a week or two, and then the moment you receive your paycheck, you're standing up straight. <laughs> 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 the moment you receive your paycheck, you're standing up straight. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we should be standing up straight each and every single day knowing that God has our back. Each and every single day, we should be walking straight knowing that God is our main provider. He is our main provider. And with that, I'll leave you with an encouraging message from the Word of God. Colossians chapter 3, verse 23 reads, Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. Let's be humble and give on to God. So when you're ready, play the music, come up here, and just get ready to give. Also, Easy Tide. You can give online. All right, be free to give online, okay? We have Easy Tide. Download the app Easy Tide and, and, and just give online. It's so easy. That's why it's called Easy Tide. Amen. I'll be giving online as well. Uh, I'd like to pray for the offering. 
praise God. Lord, I pray that each and every single hand that give that, that, that gave God, that I pray that you bless the hand, God. I pray that you multiply the blessings, God, just like you said you you unleash the floodgates of heaven upon us, God. I pray that you also humble us in a way, God. Just this, like this message I preached about, God, I pray that you humble us, God, in our way of giving, God. I ask this on the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Also, before I get st- uh, before we get started, um, Pastor Adrian wanted to let me know that uh, next week we're gonna have an amazing, an amazing service. All right, we're gonna have an amazing service. There's going to be flyers back there. All right, it looks just like looks just like this. All right, before you leave, go ahead, pick it up. All right, we're gonna be giving um, Pastor um, Adrian and Vanessa have been blessed with. Um, giving out uh, with ha- getting toys and we're going to be handing out and blessing out families with toys so invite your friends invite your family this amen, amen. all right amen. with that we're for a doubt pastor anthony <laughs> amen how are we feeling we good yeah. are y'all excited about everything the church is doing yeah. listen listen we did not have time to go and buy toys but God provided toys like every year we really try to go ahead and go out and get some toys but God was like I know y'all have been busy I got y'all don't worry about it <laughs> and man the toys just fell from the gates of heaven were open and bam there were all the toys right <laughs> but God is good and God is faithful and God is so good to us but before we get started tonight I want to do something we haven't done in a while can y'all say we haven't did this in a while and if y'all could play some prayerful music back there some way somehow i know this is on the fly um i want us to pray for one another before we get started tonight so if we could rise to our feet and if you could pray for the person next to you that god will meet their need in this holiday season or whatever it is the lord would lead you to pray for Keep on, keep on praying for the person next to you. Uplift them, encourage them.
one more second, church. Five more seconds. many have received prayer? <laughs> How many have received that prayer? Like I received that in Jesus' name. I need that. Thank you, Jesus, that we could pray because you taught us how to pray because your spirit is in us and we could pray and we know what to say. Yeah. All because of you, Jesus. Yeah. Thank you. Amen. That's awesome. We could pray for one another and, and encourage one another and really care about each other's needs and really do the one thing that can really do anything about everything that we're going through and that's stand in the gap and pray for each other. Amen? Amen. 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 So while y'all were doing that, praying, a table magically appeared on the stage. <laughs> the Lord provides. <laughs> you might be wondering, what is this table here for? And I'm going to take Julio's joke from earlier. It is not for a table's ladders and chairs wrestling match where they beat each other up with these items. It is not for that, but an illustrative purpose. See, we've been learning about the banquet. Can y'all say the banquet? Can you touch your neighbor and say, are you going to be at the banquet? Can you touch your neighbor behind you and tell them, are y'all going to be at the banquet? If there's anyone behind you. <laughs> Come on, my faith, my faith, the empty chairs. Talk to them, babes. Come on. <laughs> but Jesus prepares a banquet. <laughs> we're talking in faith to things that are not as if they were. Amen. But Jesus prepares a banquet for his people. And Jesus likens the kingdom of heaven to a banquet. And a king who prepared a feast for his son. That's what was going on in the context and the text that we were learning about last week. Like Jesus, Jesus is the son. The king is God. The banquet is going on for those who, who at first would think they would enter in. The Pharisees, right? And they deny it. They deny the invitation of God. And God is like, yo, I'm going to go elsewhere then. Can y'all say we are the other people he went to? We are the other people he went to. See, God prepares a table for us. God prepared a place for us to be with him, and that is eternity. Can you say, God has placed eternity on my heart? God has placed eternity on my heart. That's what the scripture says. But I want to get into the text. Can y'all say Luke chapter 14? Luke chapter 14. And if you have your Bibles, can you turn there with me to Luke chapter 14, verse 1? We're going to get into this text. And it says this in Luke chapter 14. One Sabbath, when he went out to dine at the house of a ruler of the Pharisees, they were watching him carefully. <laughs> watching him carefully. And behold, there was a man before him who had dropsy. See, there's a problem going on. There's a sick person. Verse 3. And Jesus responded to the lawyers and Pharisees saying, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath or not? Jesus always be getting people with these questions. Verse 4, but they remained silent. Then he took them, took him and healed him and sent him away. Now I want to get a little bit reversed into that text. You see, the Sabbath is the day where people are supposed to chill. The Pharisees are like, you can't do nothing on the Sabbath. So can y'all say they're setting up Jesus? So they set up Jesus by bringing a sick man in the area who had drops. He basically his joints were swollen. And when you see people with swollen arms or swollen legs, doesn't it look kind of bad? Like, that's not right. You better get that checked. <laughs> that's just what it is. Like, I've seen people with swollen legs, swollen arms. It's like, dang, dude. Wow. It's just so really bad. <laughs> so they're trying to set up Jesus. They're always trying to set up Jesus. You look through all the scriptures, they're trying to set up Jesus. 
Why? When half the time they try to set them up, they're failing epically. <laughs> Just what it is. They're like, we're going to get them this time. Nope, you're not. Sorry, Pharisees. Just not what it is. <laughs> so they think they're going to set up Jesus, right? They bring the sick man, and Jesus asks, is it lawful to him the Sabbath or not? And they remain silent. Then he took him and healed him and sent him away. So we ask him, is it lawful to do this? They don't answer. He's like, I could care less about your answer. I'm going to do it anyway. And here's the dude, and he walks out of that place proclaiming the goodness of God and everything, and he's all okay, right? <laughs> and it says this, which one of you having a son or an ox that has fallen into a well on a Sabbath day will not immediately pull him out? Immediately. Your kid falls in the, the well. Don't know how to swim. You're going to leave him there because it's the Sabbath? Your ox that you paid for, that you got to feed your family with, you're going to leave him there because it's the Sabbath? And they're like, oh, God, he got, he got us. Just, just, just stay, stay silent. If we stay quiet, it's like he never asked a question. <laughs> but it's not the case. Jesus knows the hearts of men. Jesus knows what's in the heart of man. So every time Jesus is by a Pharisee or religious ruler or someone who would question his authority as God, he examines their heart and their motive and exposes their hypocrisy and exposes who they really are, right? That's just what Jesus is on, the exposing tip. Like, he's going to reveal who you are. And that's what God does. He reveals the heart of men. And they could not reply, it says, verse 6, and they could not reply to these things. <laughs> it's just funny to me. They could not reply to these things. Now, Jesus does this. He's invited to, to their feast, right? He's invited to where they're at, the Pharisees, the top rulers of the day, the religious leaders, the ones who thought that they knew God, right? The ones who thought they had it all under control and knew it all. <laughs> but they didn't know they were in the presence of the one who really knew it all. The all-knowing, all-powerful, all-present God in the flesh, Jesus Christ. So they think, man, we know it all. Jesus is pretty cool. A lot of people are talking about him, so he must be pretty popular. Let's invite him to our feast because he's popular. Imagine a feast of the top celebrities of our day or the people who are making headlines of our day, and they all gather the most powerful, most influential people, right? Forbes 500, millionaires, billionaires, top charting artists in this world, actors, movie stars, whatever, sports athletes, whatever you are into, they're all at this one place gathering, but they're all there for selfish motive. Can you say selfish motive? Selfish motive. Now it says this in verse 7. Now he told a parable to those who were invited. Jesus takes his opportunity to teach. See, they tried to treat him, but he's about to teach them. You want to treat me? I'm going to teach you. You want to treat me? I'm going to teach you. So this is what it says. Now he told a parable to those who were invited. When he noticed how they chose the places of honor in their seats. So let's say this is the main place of the table. Julio, can you come up here and sit next to me right here? As a matter of fact, pull that chair right next to you. And Frankie, could you come up here and sit with us also? This would be the seats that they're choosing. Like, I want to sit in the front. I want to be noticed. I want to be seen by everyone. And Jesus is like, okay, I see what y'all are doing. You're choosing the seats of honor. And I love what Julio shared because he talked about humility without knowing it. And Jesus is going to get into humility and being humble and being the last so that you could be first in the kingdom of God. So this is how people are sitting, to be recognized, right, to be seen. And it says this in verse 8. When you are invited by someone to a wedding feast, do not sit down in a place of honor. Check this out. Let someone more distinguished than you be invited by him. And he said, to, he said, and he said you invited you both will come and say, give your place to this person, and you will begin with shame to take the lowest place. So someone more important comes, and they're like, hey, you got to move, Julio. Uh, Michael Jordan is here now. <laughs> it's going to be like kind of embarrassing, right? Like, oh, these people are here, and I got to walk away and sit over here in Alaska. But let's imagine the table's longer. Now no one can see me. Uh, here I am <laughs> at the end of the table type of thing. But look at, look at what Jesus says. Verse 10 again. But when you are invited, go and sit in the lowest place so that your host comes and he may say to you, friend, move up to a higher place. Friend, move up to a higher place. So now it's like, okay, cool, there's a free seat. See, I'm going to sit right here now. Wow, doesn't it feel much better? Like I'm not being walking away in shame, but I'm being accepted for being humbled and, and sitting far away, and God wants me near now. Wow. That's just what's up. That's what's up. That's what God wants for us to be humble, right? Yeah. Amen, amen. Thank you, brothers, for your illustrative purposes in this table and this is what it says friends move up higher then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you check that out verse 11 
For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be what? Exalted. Exalted. And we're going to get a bit more into that, amen? And it says this, the parable of the great banquet, verse 12. He said also to the man who had invited him. Oh, my gosh. So hold up. So you're telling me Jesus has the nerve, yes, to talk to the man who invited him to the place in the first place and put him on blast before all of his guests and put the spotlight on him like, I'm going to expose you too, brother, so I could teach in this place. No shame. Yes, that's what Jesus is. He, no shame, why? Because he removes our shame. <laughs> that's what Jesus does. So he's like, I'm going to put you on blast, man. And this is what it says. Let me see. My Bible app flipped on me, and now i got to scroll through the verses. Lord, technology sometimes fails us. It says this, <laughs> verse 12. He said also to the man who invited him, when you give a dinner or a banquet, do not invite your friends or brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors, lest they also invite you in return and you'll be repaid. Verse 13. But when you give a feast, invite the poor. The who? The poor. The, poor. the crippled. The who? Oh, y'all going ahead. Amen. The lame, <laughs> eager, <laughs> and the who? The blind, <laughs> and you will be blessed. <laughs> Amen. Because they cannot, check this out, they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the just. Yes. You see, he exposed the heart of everyone in that joint. Like, first you try to set Jesus up and say, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? And then when he asks you, is it? Y'all don't got an answer, and he heals anyways. True to your life. <laughs> then y'all try to be prominent and, and, and say, man, I'm going to sit in the best place possible. Because when I have a party and when they have another party, I scratch your back, you scratch mine. We invite each other. We get each other good gifts. Then I'll get you a Christmas gift, right? You give me a good gift. I'll get you a good gift. You give me a birthday gift. Then only then I'll give you a birthday gift. Because what? There's some interest in that. Right? I could repay you. You could repay me. We could repay each other. Amen. And there's no true humility in that. It's like, what can you do for me? Oh, you're going to do that for me? Then I'm going to do this for you. Listen, listen. God's heart was not like that for us. You could do this for me. I'm going to die on the cross for you. God's heart was you can do nothing at all, and you're helpless in your sin and your shame and darkness and loss, right? And I'm going to do everything for you on the cross to my son, Jesus Christ. That's what God was on. You see why he's making a big deal about everything that's going on? And so Jesus... And the scripture says he became what? Humble. And became what? A servant. To the point of death on the cross. Humility, right? So that we could know him. You see why pride gets removed? You see why humbleness is exalted? And the Bible says that God does what through Jesus Christ? Gives him the name that is above every name. At the name of Jesus, every tongue will confess that he is Lord. And he exalts him. He exalts Jesus Christ. So let's continue in the scripture. It says this, verse 13, but when you give a feast, invite the poor, invite the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the just. Verse 15, check this out. Now it's kind of awkward already, right? It's getting kind of weird. Jesus, you killed the vibe. We haven't even started eating, Jesus. What's good? <laughs> Watch this. <laughs> verse 15. When one of those who reclined at the table, when one of those who reclined at the table with him heard these things, he said to him, to Jesus, Blessed is everyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of God. Yeah, I agree with you, Jesus, because that's going to be all of us in this place. Blessed is everyone who eats at the kingdom of God. How many of us have ever had an awkward moment, and it's so weird that we say something to make it less awkward and it makes it more awkward? <laughs> that's what's going on here. Like, dude, you should have just stood quiet and stood in your seat. You're interrupting Jesus, man. He could make you mute with just one word, and you'll lose your voice. <laughs> but he doesn't do it. He's into healing people, right? But check it out. It says this. When one of those who reclined at the table with him heard these things, he said to him, Blessed is everyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of God. Don't worry, guys. We're all good. L let's get to eating now. <laughs> but he said to him, check it out. Jesus is like, you want to talk, right? You want to talk? I got you. <laughs> it says this, verse 16. But he said to him, a man once gave a great banquet and invited many. And at the time for the banquet, he sent his servant to say to those who had been invited, come for everything is now ready. 
But they all alike began to make excuses. Can y'all say excuses? excuses? The first said to him, I have bought a field and I must go out and see it. So you bought the field and didn't look at what you bought? We buy clothes and we check if there's holes in them or damage, right? Us, here. It says this in verse 19. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen and I'm going to go examine them. Five of them, bro. That's a lot of loot. <laughs> You're telling me you didn't check out that investment beforehand? Can y'all say poor excuse? Poor excuse. Poor excuse. And I love this last one. <laughs> and another said, I, have a mar- I am married. I have a wife. And therefore, I cannot come. <laughs> you know what I'm going to be doing, Jesus? I got married. I can't be there. I got a wife. <laughs> Some of y'all got that joke. (laughs) And I cannot come. So the servant came and reported these things to the master. Then the master of the house became angry. Check out the master's attitude toward everything. He became angry and said to his servant, go out quickly, quickly to the streets and lanes of the city and bring in the poor, crippled, blind, and lame. And the servant said, sir... What you commanded has been done. So they they took action, right? They went ahead and got the people who weren't at first invited. And the master said to the servant, go out to the highways and hedges and compel. Compel. That's like, yo, I'm going to compel you. I'm going to beg. I'm going to plead with you to come. It says, go out to the highways and hedges and compel people to come in that my house may be filled. See, God made provision through Jesus Christ for us to come to know him, for us to come and be at the table and be at the banquet. And God wasn't like, oh, I'm just going to be here by myself and chill. My, but I got all this food ready. No, that wasn't what God was on. That wasn't what he was on. I got all this ready in salvation for you. Just chill. I'm just going to chill here, though. Man, God, but listen, listen. God could have easily been like that, like, get this table up out of here, boys. No one's coming to the banquet, put the chairs away. That's what God could have been, all right? But he's like, no, if you denied my invitation, I want to make a way for those. The Pharisees denied the invitation of God, denied that he was God, denied that he was the one with the Father, right? I'm going to make a way for those, the Gentiles. Can y'all say the Gentiles? Gentiles. The poor, blind, blind, crippled, and lame. Can y'all say that's us? That's us. If you don't want to be that, you kind of are without Jesus. We're poor, blind, crippled, lame. We're in, in this helpless state, right? in this state where we don't know really what's going on, but we find out really what's going on with Jesus Christ. And God is like, I'm going to leave the table. There's more to, to, to bring. There's more people to invite in. I'm going to leave the table. There's others who want to feast. There's others who want to join. So look at what it says again in the text. He says, go out quickly to the streets and lanes of the city and bring in the poor and crippled and blind and lame, the people that no one wanted, the people that no one cared about, the people that were most helpless, the people that probably never thought they would be invited in the first place. It says this, and the servant said, sir, what you commanded has been done, and there is still room. Oh, man, God doesn't want that anyone should perish, but all have eternal life. And the master said to the servant, there's more room, then go further. Expand your reach. Go further. You all done doing your work in Chicago, bro, Renegade Church? Go further. Go to the highways. Go to the highways, go to the hedges, and compel people to come in that my, my house may be filled. For I tell you, none of those men who were invited shall taste my banquet. Mm. It's tough, right? It seems harsh, right? But they denied the gift of God. You see, Jesus uses his whole setting, his whole environment, where he's at at the moment, to teach a lesson about the kingdom of God. To teach a lesson about the power of God, the salvation of God, the banquet of God, the feast of God, which is heaven. And can you say, I'm going to be there? I'm going to be there. Amen. It says this in Luke chapter 13, and I want you to hone in on some key words. Luke chapter 13, verse 22 says this. He went on his way through towns and villages, teaching and journeying toward Jerusalem. And when someone said to him, Lord... Will those who are saved be a few? He said to them, strive to enter through the narrow door. For many, I tell you, will seek to enter and will not be able. When w- once the master of the house has risen and shut the door, and you begin to stand outside and to knock on the door saying, Lord, open to us, then he will answer to you, I do not know where you come from. Can you all say time has run out? Time has run out. Verse 26. Then you will begin to say, we ate and drank in your presence and You taught in our streets. 
But he will say, I tell you, I do not know where you come from. Depart from me, all you workers of evil. In that place where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, when you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets and the kingdom of God, but you yourselves are cast out. Verse 29. And people will come from east and west and north and south. Check that out. Highways, hedges, right? And recline at the table of the kingdom of God. And behold, some who are what? Some who are last will be first, and some are first who will be last. See, in God's kingdom, everything is reversed. When we humble ourselves, he exalts us. When we humble ourselves, he exalts us. See, when we come to that place, church, of acknowledgement that I didn't deserve to be at the table. I don't deserve to be at the table. But the grace of God allows me to be at the table. Everything changes. The mercy of God allows me to be at the table. Everything changes. The cross of Jesus Christ allows me to be at the table. Man, everything changes. And you see that you are accepted by God, not because who you are or what you've done, but everything that he's done for you to be in his presence and be a child of God. He's done it all. You see, the scripture goes on to say, somehow last will be first and the first will be last. We can't come thinking, man, I deserve this. (laughs) This is all because of me. I love what Pastor Edgel said last week. <laughs> we don't come to God. God comes to us. God comes to us. You see, the king was the one who gave the invite, right? These invites back in the day were given months in advance, yo. Months in advance. And then when the food was ready, which is the best part, right? Like, you're telling me the rice and beans is ready? The chicken is ready? The flan is ready? The cake is ready? The barbecue, whatever is your favorite food, is ready? Man, I don't know about you, but that's usually when people are like, let's go. Yes, it's ready. I'm ready to feast. There's fellowship happening. There's food. There's goodness. There's companionship. There's togetherness happening. But what were the hearts of the religious leaders? No. I can't go. Excuses. Mm -mm. I got a wife. I got oxen. I bought this land. What, What excuse would you give? What excuse would the people you know probably give? I gotta wash my hair. Come on. (laughs) <laughs> I got to clean my car. I got to babysit. It's snowing. It's snowing. Ooh. Ooh, that one's good. I don't feel good. I'm tired. I have plans. I have plans. You see, you see how easy it is for, man, it's so easy for us to make excuses, right? But God's like, what excuse do you have? I prepared everything. And the initial invitation was declined, and God made room for others. And I thank God that he did, because we are the others. Ooh, yeah. We are the others, man. Yeah. There's room for you at the table. Oh my, and I love what the text goes on to say. So invite others then. Because many are called and few are chosen. Bring others in. There's still room. Go to the highways. Go to the byways. There's still room. Look around this room. There's still empty chairs, right? Can y'all see? There's still room. <laughs> you see, we can see this whole place as one big table. And there's people who are starving, who do not know the spiritual food that awaits them to Jesus Christ, the bread of life. These people who are spiritually dying and we have the life to offer them and room at the table like, hey, come sit here. Come sit here. God is good. God is good. You see, Jesus was with many religious people thinking that they knew him, but they didn't know Jack. And God wanted to show himself and who he truly is. Can I say God cares about the misfits? God cares about the outcast. And to stick with our church tagline, God cares about the outsiders. <laughs> and this right here is what a church for what? The outsiders. Come in. There's room at the table. Come in. See, whenever the Pharisees try to try, <laughs> I heard some music. The heavens, the heavens, heavenly sound. Amen. <laughs> you see, Jesus wants to teach a lesson. Wow, that kind of threw me off. But Jesus wants to teach a lesson that not everyone's going to be at the party. Not everyone's going to be at the party, sadly, because people will reject God, right? But it's so awesome that we get to play a part in inviting people, at least, right, to come come and receive, come and enjoy. Come, come and see that the Lord is good. Just like this flower. We're using different ways to invite, but we're inviting, right? This is a whole come to the table flyer, believe it or not. Come to the table. And they'll come just to get toys, free gifts, right? But they're going to get a real free gift, I pray in Jesus' name. The gift of salvation, the gift of a relationship with God, the gift of a whole life changed, a whole new life. Amen? Amen. You see, the feast is for the faithful. 
And this is what it says in Isaiah chapter 25, verse 6. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food full of marrow, of aged wine well and refined. Can y'all say Jesus loves to eat? Jesus. See, when Jesus came back down, he was eating fish and stuff with his, his people. We're like, yo, give me some fish, yo. When we go to heaven, we're going to be feasting. Feasting. It's going to be awesome. I'm so excited about that. Because then we'll be feasting and there won't be no sin because we're in glorified bodies, right? So I don't know if we'll really get full, but I know we're going to taste the food, right? So it's like, how does that all work? I don't know, but at least it works. Thank you, Jesus, right? <laughs> See, the feast is for the faithful. The feast is for the humble. The feast is for the people who know that there was nothing in them to begin with, but everything in God that started it off. Yeah. Nothing good in me. I'm a chief of the sinners, Paul said, right? I'm a chief of the sinners. Woe is me. I am a man of unclean lips and dwell among the people of unclean lips, it says in Scripture. <laughs> and whatever our mind is of who we are, and if it's a, a, a mindset of man lowly and, and who am I, Lord, that you would choose me, then you begin to see who, truly who you are, right, and why he chose you. It says this in Revelation, and we could all turn here, chapter 19, verse 7 through 9. It says this, let us be glad and rejoice, and let us give honor to him. For the time has come for the wedding feast of the Lamb. That's Jesus and his bride has prepared herself, that is his church, that is you and me, his people, have prepared herself. She has been given the finest of pure white linen to wear. Not your own righteousness, but the righteousness of God you are clothed with, right? And it says this, for the fine linen represents the good deeds of God's holy people. Other versions say the righteousness of God. And it says this in verse 9, and the angel said to me, write this. Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding feast of the Lamb. Hmm. And he added, these are true words that come from God. Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding feast of the Lamb. Blessed are those who receive the invite. Blessed are those who sit at the table and allow God to slowly work on them as they sit at the end of the table and realize, man, I really have nothing to offer. And then God says, I want to use you. I want to give you things to offer this world. I want to use you for eternity and to impact someone's life. Come sit a little closer to me. Come sit a little closer to me. But I'm doing this. I'm going through this. Come sit a little closer to me. And we sit closer and closer to God. But God, I never thought you'd do this in my life. Exactly. I want to do this in your life. Through your life. Come sit closer to me. See, there are probably things in your life, in my life, in our lives that are probably pulling us away from the table, completely the table of God. Maybe excuses are stopping us from coming to the table of God. But we got to stop those excuses. We got to stop those excuses because excuses will make us useless. Excuses will make us useless, but God wants to use us. See, there's no excuse, man. There's no excuse to not be used by God. There's no excuse to not be at the table and invite others to come at the table. There's no excuse, man. God gives us everything that we need, all power, all authority has been given to him, the Bible says. Therefore, he gives it to us and tells us, go. Go. Go to the highways. Go to the byways. Go to the north, the south, the east, the west, but just go and tell. And I will be with you, and I will not leave you, and I will not forsake you. Amen. See, he gives us this table to sit at, and it's such an amazing thing. And I'm so grateful to God that we get to sit at the table that he would give us an invitation to respond, to sit at the table and call others. You see, with a feast and with a banquet, can y'all say there's planning? Can y'all say there's preparation? There's preparation. And can y'all say there's parting? There's parting. Hmm. You see, I, I want to do this real quick. There was planning for the banquet. There was preparation. He prepared food. He invited, come. No one came. He invited again those people who probably never thought they'd come, and then they came through, and God changed them completely. And I'm sure he healed all the blind, poor, lippo, uh, crippled, and, and blind. I'm sure he healed them all, right? But there's planning, preparation, and parting. Now I want to flip that over to this, planning. How did God have you in his plan? It says this in the scriptures, Ephesians 1, verse 5, as I close. He predestined us for adoption as his sons through Jesus Christ. 
predestined you, that's before you ever know what's going to happen, to be a son, to be a daughter, through who? Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will. Ephesians 1 verse 5. This planning, it says this in Ephesians 1 verse 11. In him, in Jesus, we were also chosen as God's own, having been predestined, there was that word again, according to the plan of him who works everything out by the counsel of his will. Another scripture, before the foundations of the world were laid out, God predestined that you would be his son or his daughter and save you, right? <laughs> Another one, that we were enemies of God, still enemies of God, still enemies of God, enemies of God, not with him, not for him, not children to be on his side. He saw fit to die for us and give his life as a ransom for many. Preparation, it says this, Jesus speaking in John chapter 14, verse 3. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. We're going to be there. We're not there yet, but we're going to be there. It says this in the scripture. Can I say parting? parting. <laughs> Luke 15, verse 7, it says this. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents. Can y'all say just one? Just one. Yes, just one. Now let, look at the dynamic of the numbers here. One sinner who repents, then over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance or think that they're righteous and need no repentance. Pharisee-like attitude, right? But one person who sees, man, I messed up. I need you, God. There's parting going on. For each and every one of us in this place, there was planning, preparation, and parting that occurred. And there will be a continual parting, preparation, and planning that occurs, right? As we invite more to come, and more to come, and more to join at the table. And I want to close with this last verse as the music plays. And you can turn it with me in your Bible app if you'd like. In Revelation chapter 21. This is what it says. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth has passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. The church, the church, you and me. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold! The dwelling place of God is with man. Hmm. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people. And God himself will be with them as their God. And he will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore. For the former things have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give from the spring of the water of life without payment. The one who conquers will have this heritage, and I will be his God, and he will be my son or my daughter. That is talking about you, church. That is talking about us. That is talking about a feast that is going on, a new heaven, a new earth, a reality that awaits us but is not yet. You see, we go through this life, and yes, there's tears, and yes, there's pain, and yes, there's mourning, and yes, there's struggles. We know the one who has overcome the world because we are those who will be at the table, right? We know the one who has conquered all sin and death because we have found out about the table, the feast, the banquet, right? <laughs> I love that it says that the old things were passed away and all things were made new. All things were made new. All things were made new. It is done, Jesus says. It is done. It has a resounding similarity to the words on the cross it is finished it is finished it is finished and because it is finished we can start right we can keep going we can keep fighting let's rise to our feet church
I thank you, God, for your parable, Lord, and for your teaching style, God, that makes it easy for us to understand your goodness and your mercy, God. I thank you, God, that all of us in this room, or the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame, who had nothing to give you, God, but you wanted us near you, God. You invited us to the table to feast, God, to eat, Lord, God, to partake, God, to be a part of, Lord, something greater than ourselves, God. I pray that, Lord, in this room, Lord, you would ready a church, God, to invite others to the table, God. Those who would say, Lord, come, taste, and see that the Lord is good. Those who would, God, compel, 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 plead, Lord God, for others to come, Lord God. In Jesus' name, I pray to 2017, Lord God. We would, Lord God, have a banquet going on in the spiritual realm, Lord God, in this house, God. We would invite others to the banquet, Lord Jesus. Lord, thank you for using, Lord God, what would seem as a setup, God, for a moment to teach, God. And thank you for revealing your truth through your word, God. And thank you, God, that you make room for us, God. That you make room for us, God. Thank you for your mercy, God. Thank you for your grace, God. Thank you for your interceding for us, God. Thank you for your fighting for us, God, when we couldn't fight, when we had no fight left, God. You saw us, God. Before the foundations of the world, you saw us, God. You called us, God. You predestined us, God, according to your good will and your purpose, God. You set us apart, God. Oh, God, I pray we walk strong, God. Heal and walk in a manner worthy of the gospel. Help us, Lord God. Help us, Lord God. We need your help. We're not too prideful to say we don't need your help. We got it. We've been saved for X amount of years. No, we need your help, Holy Spirit. We need you, Jesus. I can't do a thing without you. We can't do a thing in this city without you. We can't make real change without you, God. So help us, Lord. Help us, Lord, in 2017. Help us, Lord, in our future endeavors, God. Help us, Lord, when we move to a Sunday service, Lord God. Help us, Lord Jesus, for every little thing, every little detail. We need you, God. Order our steps, God. Order our steps, God. Order the steps of this church, God. That we be in alignment with your perfect will, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your presence in this place, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come on, wherever you are, thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Come on, thank him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. We were the ones that no one wanted a thing to do with God. But you scooped us up, God, and you're going to use us for great things, Lord. I believe that. I believe that, Lord. Our lives are not worthless or meaningless in you, God. They're full of purpose and, and, and mission, Lord. God, in Jesus' name, Lord. Every negative mindset be removed in Jesus' name, God. Every lie of the enemy, Lord, be shut in Jesus' name, God. For we believe that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, Lord. And you have called us for a work and for a mission, Lord. That we would be those who go and tell others, Lord, come, come, come. There's room at the table. Come, there's room at the table. Come, there's room at the table. And they would see you as the gracious God you are, Lord. In Jesus' name, Lord God, thank you, Lord Jesus, for this service and this time of learning. We pray all these things in your name, God. Amen. Amen. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus Christ. I got one announcement for us. You all be seated. God is good, man. God is faithful. God is good to us. And God, I love how he breaks things down in parables so we can learn, right? We need stories, man. That's what, that's what it is. You see, God cares about people who others don't care about, right? That's very much the heart of God. The misfits, the outcasts, the people who probably think they're the worst of the worst. No, God wants them. God wants them. God wants them to himself to show his love, his love that is not like human love. And God also wants orphans and widows and those who are fatherless and have no family to experience the love and being a part of his family. Yeah, yeah. And those are foster children. Foster children. They don't have a mom or a dad, right? They don't have a home. They probably don't even have an identity. And they're trying to figure it out, right? They're trying to figure, man, who am I? Why am I here? What is this life? I don't even, my parents don't even care about me. They left me here. I could only imagine what they go through. Feelings of rejection, inadequacy, feeling less than, right? 
probably thinking God doesn't care at all about them. But church, we can make a difference about that. Yes. See, because our God is a father to the fatherless. That's what the word of God says. He's a father to the fatherless. And he is a good, good father, the scripture says. You see, in God's heart, and he says true religion is those who care for the orphans and the widows. That's what I care about. People who are broken, because I want to fix them. I want to shape them. I want to mold them. I want to show them a love that they've never experienced before. That's the love of God. A love that we've never experienced even from a natural parent. God can show that love to you. And church, we have a part to make a difference in the life of a foster child. And how do we do that? For the core team, at least, for those who are part of the core team here, it's by going to Ross and getting a $20 gift card. But if you want tonight, you could also give an offering of any type, any amount, to help out these foster foster children. On December 23rd, we're going to throw a party for them. And they're going to be here, and they're going to be with us. Man, church, listen, take that time to love on them. If you're a mom in this place, a mama like you birthed children, I don't know what that is like, and I'll never know, right? But it's hard. It's painful out here. <laughs> but y'all know the love of a mother. You know how to love, right? Love on them as a mom. Love on them as if they were your own son, your own daughter. Take advantage of that moment, December 23rd. If you're a father in this place, love on them because they need to see that. They need to feel that, right? Maybe they've been hopping from home to home. and Man, people are mistreating them. Man, let's show them the love of Christ through God, the love of God that is unconditional, man. That despite what you're going through, we love you, we care for you, we, we want to make a difference. We could do that today again by giving an offering of any amount as the music plays and you get your envelope or even through Easy Tide, you could go to, to Easy Tide and there's an option there for the foster children. You could select that and give. The 23rd of December. So a few days before Christmas. We could give these kids the greatest gift of their life. Not just a monetary game, but love, loving on them and encouraging them, speaking to them, having a conversation with them. Y'all still giving? I see people on their mobile devices. There's time, there's no rush. Go ahead. If you have your envelope and you're ready to come up here and give, feel free to do so. If you've given by a show of hands, say I've given, I've supported, I'm going to make a difference. However you want to say it, go ahead and say it. I want to pray for everyone who gave and closed out the service tonight. Lord God, I thank you for every man, woman, child, everyone in this room who gave, God, to make a difference in the life of a foster child, God, of someone who does not know real love, God, and maybe feels inadequate, God, I pray that on the 23rd, God, Something supernatural happened in this place, God. Apart from all the natural festivities and gift giving, Lord God, that something supernatural happened, and that be that your love invade this place, God. That your love invade this place, and you primarily use each and every one of us to display that love, God. We make ourselves available, God. We make ourselves vessels, God, for you to use, Lord Jesus. That we would be your love, your face, your hands, your feet to these children. In Jesus' name, God, and I thank you for everyone who gave online, Lord, and even in this place financially, God. Bless their seed, God. Bless them, Lord God, as only you can. In Jesus' name, we pray all these things. And I thank you for this time and service, God, that we would leave home safely in the snow, and that you be with us and minister to us. In Jesus' name, I pray all these things, God. Amen and amen. Amen, amen. amen. We may be dismissed, church, until next week. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be incredible. I love you guys.